So, well, hello everyone. Thanks for attending. Let me make a small challenge for you. The challenge is about that you should imagine that you are a front-end developer. Yeah, I know it's hard, but try to do it, okay? So, you are a front-end developer, and you got this nice wireframe from your designer. That's okay, it's nice, you like it, but it has some requirements. Let's see. The title in this hero may be one or more line longs, of course. And the title, as you can see, overlaps the image, but the teaser text aligns to it. The text, the title and the text should keep this layout even if there's no image. You have to keep the same layout. Oh, and this image is part of the content, so it's an image tag and not a background image. And if it's not enough, the height of this hero depends on its content length. It may be dictated by the image or the text, which is higher. Oh, and it's just a desktop layout, but I, I think it's enough, so I won't talk about now about the mobile layout. I know you are a smart front-end developer, so of course you can do it, but how will you do it? Maybe you will use absolute positioning. We like absolute positioning, no, we don't like, but we have to use now. And we will use Zend index, you will use Z index and some margin and padding tricks and uh, a width declaration using some calc and that's it. Or you will use something else. If you don't want to deal all with stuff, all these complicated things, maybe you will use CSS grid. I hope you are here because you are interested in using CSS grid. So welcome everyone. My name is Tomás Hajos. I'm a Drupal and web project manager and a front-end developer too. I work for Integral Vision Limited in Hungary. This is a small Drupal agency, but a well-known Drupal agency, and I work for them remotely, which is the best way to work, I think. You can find my online name card at, at tamash.github.io. So, and today I want to talk about two new things in CSS, and the first is CSS Grid. These slides are online, so you can find them at tamash.gitlab.io slash CSS grid custom props. It is important it is GitLab and not GitHub. So you can check this, you can follow along or check just quickly and if you find it's not interesting you may leave but I hope you will stay here. I work on this. So I'd like to ask you, don't try to learn everything today or don't try to remember everything. It's not possible and it's not useful. Instead, please focus on understanding. I will show you some examples, but these topics are much bigger. Uh, we can't uh, check everything in this little presentation. So, we were talking about that we could uh, create this hero when we could simplify this test using CSS grid. So just check this image. And you can see if we have a grid with three columns and two rows, and we can place items into these columns and to these rows, into these areas, our problem is solved. So how will we do it? I won't show it with this, but a simpler example. But before we go into the details, I have to say some words about CSS grid and why is it important. Before CSS grid, all our web layout methods are some kind of hacks. We use tools and wrote a lot of code, HTML and CSS, just to be able to create the needed layout, but were, they were not intended to create this, those layouts, what we created with them. The first real layout tool in CSS is the CSS grid, and it has some new things. The first is that it's two-dimensional, it's true truly truly measurable, which means you can align items in columns and in rows in the same times. Any, no other tools in CS which 
can be able to do is, this is the first one. And the other thing is that it's layout on, which means layout in and then content out, which means you create and grid and place items in the grid. So let's see an example, how to start it. Here's an ordinary page, nothing interesting here. We have four sections, a page title, a main content, an aside, and a footer. And all of these are in a container div. It's a really simple HTML structure. We want to create a grid layout from this. How to do this? The first step is just define our grid container. And we do this just uh, using the container selector and this display property set grid. That's all we have to do. We did it, and voila, nothing changed. Oh, did we miss something? Of course not. Uh, in the background, a lot of things happened. When we set display grid, it just created a grid container, and all the direct children of the grid container became grid items. However, the grid items are placed in rows by default and span the full width of the grid container. So now we have a real grid container, we have a real full grid, but this is the default display. Of course, most of the time, we don't want elements under each other on wider screens, so we want to create columns. So we define columns, how we do this. This is the grid template columns property. I set it and I created two columns. You can check it. We have two columns. Maybe you wonder what are these FR characters there. This is a very new, new unit uh, created with the CSS grid specification. We could use any kind of length value, so we could use M's, pixels, or person, but no, we used FR. FR units represents a fraction of the available space in the grid container. In this example, the first column takes up two sections, and the second column takes one section, as you can see it. And that's all we have to do. Uh, moment. You may see, too, that all our items, just auto items, just automatically placed in this grid. We have four items in two columns, and you may see that, too, that we have two rows of items. However, we, we didn't uh, define any rows, but because the browser placed all the items in the grid, it just automatically created uh, two rows for us to be able to place all the items in the grid container. So, uh, you can see that it's automatically placed, but maybe this is not what we want. So we don't want the main content in a narrow sidebar, just near to the page title. So we have to fix it somehow. So we want to place items by columns. We have our columns, and we want to place our main uh, section, and that's how we do it. We define the grid column property and two numbers. Let's show what we have, and then go to the details. So we have now this layout. We moved the main content just below the page title. How did we do it? I tried to move here and show you the grid itself. What you see now, this is the grid inspector tool of the Firefox developer edition, which I really recommend all of you who want to deal with the grid, because it's really cool. So, uh, if you are close enough, you will see some lines. And these lines are very important, this is also a new concept, grid lines. They separate the grid into fractions. They are referenced by number starting and ending with the outer borders of the grid. And these lines are, these line numbers are used in this, okay, I will be back, so in this definition. This means place the main content from the first line, which is here, you can see the number, to the second line, which is here. 
So it's really important if you used any kind of grid tool before, uh, you may be used to place items defining the columns or the rows. No, we don't, in CSS, we won't, won't define the columns, we define the lines in the grid, the separating lines, and that's what we use to position the items. So, that's nice. We like it, I like want to close. That's okay. So, we position our main content, but unfortunately, this layout is a little bit broken now, or maybe it's changed, at least. So, if you want to place other items, maybe we should place the items not just by columns, but by rows, too. So, oh, I just forgot to go back. Okay, here we go. Place items by rows. First, we have to define our rows, because we had rows, but not enough rows. So I use the grid template rows property and define three rows. In this case, the first row has an auto height, which means it, its height is dictated by the content, and the three fraction height and the one fraction height rows. Then I place my items in these rows, and you can see that grid items can span multiple rows or columns. In this case, the main section will start at the second line and end at the fourth line, which means it will span two rows. Also, the page aside will start with the, at the first line and end at the third line, which also means that it will span two rows. And as you can see, it happened really. So, it's nice, we almost done everything we had to do. There's one last thing. Maybe you don't want your sections to touch each other. What we do now, we need gutters. Gutters in CSS grid called grid gap. So we set a grid gap, and there's now other thing easier. We just define grid gap. We can use any length value again. I have two numbers, which means the gap is 10 pixels between rows and 20 pixels between columns. And uh, it is also important and also nice thing that grid gaps are only created in between columns and rows, not along the edge of the grid container. That's it. So I have the gaps and just between the rows and the columns. Now you know everything about CSS Grid, everything, every basic step. Now you will be able to create a CSS Grid. Congratulations. Of course, there are a lot of more things in CSS Grid. Let me just show you some quick examples, some more quick examples. Here's the first one. This is a responsive gallery CSS Grid. And if we check this, I can move this. And the item just automatically reordered. And I wonder, what do you think, how many breakpoints did I use? Any ideas? Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Zero is the right answer, yes. So just let's resize it back to be able to show the code for you. Zero breakpoints and only three lines of code. That's all we need to do this. There are some new things here too. The first one is the repeat function here. And this auto fit and minimax, these things are all new in CSS. The repeat function allows us to specify the same value for multi multiple columns in the grid. And it has two arguments. The first one is the number of times to repeat something. And the second one is the value to be repeated. OK. So the first one is the number of times to repeat. So there should be a number. But there is no a number. Instead, there is auto fit. This is a keyword which can be used in the repeat function instead of a number to times the repeat. This will flexibly change the number of the columns. 
depending on the width of the container. It is an automatism which can be used very well. And the second property is also a function, a CSS function is the min mac function. It also has two arguments, the minimum size and the maximum size. In this case, this means one item is 200 pixels wide minimum and one fraction wide maximum. And that's all we have to do. So let's see an another example. It's also CSS grid and it also have a nice behavior. But this time, oops, and that's it. It won't be reordered, but if you see, the grid gap size is changing. So how did we do this? Let me see. Okay, here we are. Here's the code, but it's missing some lines. So I will show you the first one. Yeah. So our git column gap property has an interesting value. It has war dash dash gutter. Also, our root selector has a gutter dash dash gutter 10 peaks. And in a media query, our root selector has a gutter 60 peaks value. What is it? This is our second topic. CSS custom properties for cascading variables, or shortly custom properties or CSS variables. So th these variables are very similar to preprocessor variables. They contain specific values that are intended to be reused. So the really important part is that why preprocessor variables are static. So you create a variables and when uh, CSS created from sus or less, there will be a static value. But CSS variables, CSS custom properties are dynamic. The values can be changed at any time. Let me show you the syntax. It's really easy. So we just have our query word, our definition, and preface with two dashes. It's maybe ugly, but very useful. It's just like the browser prefixes without the browser name. It's the same thing, really the th true story. This is the source of this format. So this is how we define a custom property. And we use the var function to call this property anywhere in our code. We can define anywhere or custom property, but it is important that it has to be defined inside the selector. And then we can use it anywhere. And if you look at that root thing and uh, you are not familiar with that, it's just uh, identical to, in HTML to the HTML selector, but it has a higher specificity, which is useful for us because CSS custom properties and these values are inheritable. So it's good to have a uh, good specificity. Some more syntax. Dash dash foo, colon, semicolon. This is invalid because we have no value. However, colon, space, semicolon is valid because the value is an empty space. Interesting. Also, we can use uh, custom property as a value and other custom property. So this is valid. However, dash dash lowercase foo is not equal to dash dash uppercase foo because custom properties are case sensitive. So another concept, fallbacks. CSS variables can be set with the fallbacks if the variable is not set. So when I call a variable, and this value is not set, then the fallback value will be used. This is the fallback value. So I have a box, and if the main color custom property is not set, then this box we use the green color. Of course, I can use a CSS variable as a fallback, and this CSS variable can have its own fallback, 
and I can change them any times I want, but please don't be crazy. Okay. So, let me show you some examples. For example, using custom properties, I could create uh, a custom property to all possible value of the box shadow property. So I can define box shadow x, x and then I could define the epsilon, blur, spread, color, and all of them. And you can see that I defined the property with the value initial. This is to prevent inheritance. Initial means just use the initial value of a custom property. But custom property can't have an initial value, which means it will be nothing, so you won't, that nothing will be inherited. This is big importance not to set everywhere and everything. Then I call the box shadow uh, custom property in the box shadow property, and I set a fallback, zero. So by default, nothing will be shown. I can do this for the Y, blur, spread, and all the other values of the box shadow. And when I want to use the box shadow, I will just redefine those custom property values which I want to use. So I set these three things, I get, and I got this orange box. And if I want to change, for example, the hard color, all I have to do just to change the color property. And this will work, I hope. Yes, it works. That's all. So this can help to simplify our code and or to customize our code just to use what we want. We can create long hands and short hands and a lot of variations. And let me show you my favorite example. Some eyes. And these eyes, if I'm right, will follow my mouse. Yeah, that's it. So I'm looking at you. Be careful. So, how did I use it? The first thing is, oops, just some JavaScript code. I won't go to the details, uh, but what this sh short snippet is do is just uh, get the position of the mouse and save the X and the Epsilon position to uh, mouse X and the mouse Epsilon custom property. So the values I set these two CSS custom properties, and then nothing to do, uh, just I use these values to set the position in CSS. And because custom properties are dynamics, as I change the value, as I move the mouse, the values changed, and the position also will change. That's all. Easy, simple, short code. Nice. One recommendation, don't use custom properties just because they are modern. Use them with purpose. Because custom properties, if you don't do this and you define a lot of custom properties just because it's modern and fancy, you may have performance issues. Use the right tool to everything. And I think that's all. Uh, I really recommend Rachel Andrew. Her presentation, articles, and the fantastic grid by example come site if you want to learn more about CSS grid. And I also had a good use of the CSS variable war subtitle presentation of Lee, Leah Vero. It's nice, it's good to check if you are interested in, in more details. Of course, please join us for contribution sprints tomorrow. And please tell me and all the organizers, what did you think about this presentation? I'd like to ask you, if you didn't like this presentation, tell me. But if you liked it, tell everyone, tell your friends and the others. And really, please, please, please really give feedback. I really I will be happy to get any feedback. So that's all. Thanks for your attention. And If you have questions, I'm happy to answer. Hi, um, is it possible to create rules between columns? 
Pardon? Like rules, like lines. Yeah? Yeah. So what, what is the question about rules? Is it possible to crea create rules between columns? Rules between columns? Lines. Lines. Yes, it was the grid gap property. The gap is not a line. I mean, oh, yes. that is in the middle of the gap. Oh, uh, I think so. Then you won't use the grid gap property because it is an empty space. So you won't have gap, but you use another element or something like this and uh, give margin or padding to that. So the line would be a rule? Yeah. OK, thank you. Never tried it, but I hope it works. <laughs> Hey, uh, just in terms of uh, like checking equality, I saw you said like foo equals foo, but one's uppercase, yep. blah, blah. Um, how does that work with like colors? So for example, if you do like zero, 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 is that equal to six zeros? Or is it different because it's like, you know, it's the shorthand version of the property? It, it works any kind of uh, values, valid values, valid CSS values. So can you use a shorthand or the longhand too? Okay, cool, thanks. That's it. Uh, in some of the examples, you've shown us that uh, you can put it from grid one to two or two to four or whatever. Yeah. And you have horizontal and vertical versions of that. So what happens if you only use the horizontal uh, positioning but not the vertical? Like how does it, what does it do when you don't specify what you want? Any, any value that you won't specify will be specified automatically. So if you, you don't have to specify anything, you will specify just your need. Even it is possible if you want a one, uh, one column wide item, it's enough to specify the first value, so the starting line, or in the column or in the row. So, and everything else will, will be defined automatically. So basically one line is default? Yeah. yeah. Oops. Oh, yeah. Great, great talk, thanks. Thank um, you very much. What level of browser support are there for some Oh, these I just waited this question. <laughs> so, browser support is great. It's about uh, above uh, seventy percent general, and all modern browsers supports CSS grid and also custom properties. Of course, there are some gotchas, and Edge has some ideas about grid support, but. Uh, uh, it's worth to mention that the first version of the CSS grid was developed by Microsoft, yes. And still Microsoft, Microsoft Edge still uses the old specification, but it supports the new version behind the flag. So it will be supported soon. So it, I think it's safe to use, and there are a lot of, a lot of ways to, to over, I think, if it don't work or if you have to support all browsers. But it, it works to start to use it and find ways to, to support all the browsers if you need that. That's all. Any other question? So that's, thank you very much. I ask you to, if you understand, if you're interested in uh, CSS, please stay here because you can hear about the future of CSS from Ripple in the next presentation. Thank you very much. That's so. <laughs>